Alright guys, welcome back to Formula 1 news, an absolutely huge development today in the Formula 1 World Championship with Logan Sargent officially axed by Williams Racing, they're going to bring in Franco Colapinto instead, a big surprise given all the circumstances over the last few days, naming Liam Lawson and Mick Schumacher as the most likely replacements, but even this circumstance in the first place raises many things into question, is this the correct decision from Williams in the circumstances and James Valves, could they have made this decision earlier, what does it mean for all parties, do you agree with this in the comments below, will Colapinto score any more points than Sergeant has done or make any less mistakes? Very much interested to your thoughts in the comments below. Hit the like button if you enjoy. Subscribe if you're new as always. I would greatly appreciate it. Sorry for the later video today. Plenty to get into, however. First of all, these race suits from Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. I don't know what's going on here. This is probably the best angle I've seen of them. This angle is atrocious. And uh, yeah, I don't know what Ferrari are cooking up here for Monza, but these are going to be their race suit to their home Grand Prix. Possibly a special livery, possibly not. Speaking of things not the best about the Italian Grand Prix so far, these are the trophies. I mean, I'm not the biggest fan personally. I think it's meant to be some sort of like Pirelli thing. So this is like rubber. Well, it's not rubber, but you know what I mean? They've designed it to kind of look like rubber. It's uh, strange. I think to some people that will kind of creep them out. I'm not going to lie. Speaking of Ferrari, though, they've got upgrades in the pipeline. They've done the Ferrari Classic. They're turning up to Monza. And guess what they're going to do? They're going to bolt a load of upgrades on the car. This is what they do. They absolutely love it. And, um, you know, look, Ferrari have been puzzled by their fluctuations in form. They were better in Zandvoort than many of us expected. And now they've got this Monza upgrade on the way. The scary thing is that McLaren have stuff on the way as well. And this is why they are looking so... Well, so much of a force at least in terms of the constructors championship right now McLaren not only do they have the most complete package but they just keep on improving it and it's going to happen here again it seems in Monza McLaren say they've got some fun stuff coming potentially some circuit specific stuff I think that's a key point because right now McLaren are effectively dominating on circuits that are medium to high downforce take them to an absolute low downforce circuit lowest of the low How's the McLaren going to do? Is the Ferrari going to be good? How's the Mercedes going to do there? Probably not spectacular, but who knows what they're going to bring in. And of course, the Red Bull over the last couple of years has been unbeatable at this type of circuit because they had Red Bull, this massive straight line speed and massive DRS advantage. That doesn't really seem so true anymore, certainly not this season. And as a result, they could run at Monza over the last couple of years a medium downforce wing because they knew that if they were behind anyone, they could just make an easy overtake with DRS and it preserves the tyres better and stuff like that. But this year, Red Bull will likely have to go because well, we'll see what they decide to do for a lower downforce version. And to be fair, they've actually preferred Red Bull if they can to run slightly higher downforce over the you know, previous few weekends. So um, interesting test for McLaren to see where they land and how competitive they'll be at Monza, which of course is a very different track. If they dominate Monza, certainly over Red Bull, then I think we really do still have a season on our hands with eight rounds to go. Let's say Lando wins again and Max is like second or third. That's another, you know, seven, ten point swing that puts the championship lead at, you know, 60 points or so with eight rounds to go, in which case it's definitely on. I mean, a point scamp this big has never been overturned ever in the history of the sport. Well, you've got to clarify to some degree that back in the day, the point system didn't work as it did today. But nonetheless, this would be an incredible comeback and it's probably not going to be happening. But as Christian Horner says, plenty of work to do. The one silver lining that Red Bull fans do have is the fact that in many ways, this was a test weekend in Zandvoort where Max still came seconds and they learned a lot from the weekends. So, well, at least they say they did. There's a difference, though, between learning a lot and figuring out what you're going to do about it. Because, sure, they use different floor specifications. They did all sorts of different stuff. Does it mean necessarily that Red Bull are able to turn up to Monza and say, oh, you know, we've cracked the code? That's not going to happen. I think really it's more so about the RB21. It's about trying to figure out in terms of next year's direction development where they actually go. Because if they don't solve these problems quickly, it's not just going to compromise this year, right? And that's a key piece of understanding to have. So let's talk about this situation, right? Here, free practice three on the weekend. On the Saturday, Logan Sargent turns up, puts two wheels in the wet grass on the right-hand side, coming out of the banking, obviously in that kind of like hairpin banking, whatever you want to say, towards the end of the first sector and smashes it into the barriers as a result of it. It's not his first mistake. I mean, I would say this wasn't even as bad as his mistake at Suzuka. I think it was last year, whatever it was, when he put the car in the wall there, 
and he just decided not to turn in for some reason. It was a very strange crash, and this was another very strange crash, although given the circumstances. In many ways, it was kind of a brutal one for Williams, because this was their first weekend with what seemed to be a pretty major upgrade. Now, to be fair, as it turned out, Albon was disqualified from qualifying because his floor was slightly too wide. They were able to modify it, so clearly some major errors on the Williams side there to ensure that their, you know, new update was actually not conforming to the regulations as it was meant to have been, but nonetheless it did work right on Albon's car. He got through to Q3, Sergeant wasn't even able to try because he'd crashed his car and they couldn't fix it in time, destroying the gearbox, the chassis, the engine, so many other components that, um, you know, just not acceptable. And you saw that from James Valls, you saw that from the engineers on the pit wall, the mechanics were like, you know, we can't be serious, this guy's done it again. And it's not like with Logan, his highs make up for the lows. You know, it's not like he's a crash happy driver, but he's also putting in rapid times. Like he's getting smoked by Albon week in, week out, and is putting it in the wall. Like there isn't really too much else to say than that. So there's still a debate on it, as we'll get to in a second. But obviously, had Sargent even qualified, he probably would have been disqualified anyway because of the floor problem. He does get to race in the end on Sunday, but again, you know, was pretty underwhelming. And that's been the case now for quite some time. So there was then a rumour that Valls had officially lost patience and was going to try somebody else. Because, to be honest, everyone has known that there has been no faith in Sargent in that team for a long time. Certainly after Australia, that was the key one, wasn't it, when Albon crashed and they said, all right, Logan, out you jump. Albon's getting in your car. Nearly scored points but didn't that was a quite clear indication that they had no faith in Logan and he was going to go at some point to be honest I'm not really sure why they kept him another year he wasn't good enough last year in my opinion anyway there were other drivers they could have thought about Williams you know look American driver there's some benefits to that they've obviously done you know US Grand Prix this year in Miami but they've not managed to make it Williams to Austin or to, Te or to Vegas probably to you know obviously reap the rewards of that to some degree and obviously there's money involved with those kind of conversations as well. So I understand it from the Williams POV, but it never really made that much sense to me. Now Mick Schumacher was considered the hot favourite earlier today to actually take this spot. That's because of the Liam Lawson situation, whereby there was some discussion with Red Bull, and we talked about this yesterday, that if Red Bull want Lawson back, which is pretty interesting that Red Bull are saying this, just because they are clearly opening the door here, as we'll see here in a second, to the possibility of still making a change of Red Bull in their camp, because the rumour had it, and this has now been talked about even further today after this announcement, that Red Bull were not so keen on sending Lawson to Williams, because if they want to bring Lawson back at any time, then Williams obviously would be in a tough spot, and therefore James Valls is like, why would I do that? I'll just get another driver instead, even if Lawson is the best of the options. But shortly after the decision was made, Logan Sargent is going to be gone. Williams have made that decision, and at least initially it was like, okay, who's his replacement going to be? And we found out shortly afterwards. But firstly, we've just got to say, was this the right move or the wrong move? Now, like you guys know me, I'm on the side of being ruthless about this type of stuff. I think he should have lost his seat a while ago, probably at the end of last season, to be honest. But he kept it for this year. And I know that in many respects, people think that Sargent's been hard done by, but like, I'll be honest, I, I don't think he's shown me anything in the last two years, maybe one session in the last two years that I've been like, maybe Sargent's got what it takes. But outside of that, it's been just underwhelming every time. And it's surprising in a way because he was a pretty damn good qualifier when he was driving in Formula 2, that didn't really translate, nor did it in terms of performance on the track. So, look, Logan, he had his time in Formula 1. I actually think for both parties, this might be for the best. I think Williams, well, I'm not sure about Williams' replacements here. We'll discuss that in a second. But for Logan, it gives him a chance to look at other opportunities, go to another motorsport series, get things signed early on. He's not going to get another Formula 1 spot, but he's still going to get, you know, good opportunities in maybe IndyCar or WEC or whatever he decides to go and do next. Wishing him the best, but um, look, not a great Formula 1 driver. I think James Vowles made that quite clear himself when he said Logan's still one of the top 10, oh, sorry, I mean top 20 drivers in the world which is pretty harsh, but um, well, obviously it's true, like fundamentally, he meant to say top 20, because I guess he was trying to say oh, one of the drivers on the top 10 teams in the world, but um, then he had to clarify Val's that no, Logan's not a top 10 driver, he's a top 20 driver, but even that obviously is, um, you know, probably pushing it right to a top 20 driver in Formula 1, and that's about all you're going to find. So yeah, they confirmed that Logan's going to be gone, maybe it sounds like I'm being kind of harsh on him here, but at the end of the day, these guys are going to be paid, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions 
millions of dollars to drive these cars and they're going to get criticized as well as you don't perform you're going to be fired it's happened multiple times in formula one history and it's happening again now the question really is whether this specific move is the one that makes the most sense in the circumstances because sergeant gone it's like fine i, I understand that certainly after this past weekend destroying the latest upgrade package now they've got to do work on that again and also for next year, if you know you're not keeping Sargent, you've got no faith in him to improve because clearly after Australia, they didn't have any of that anyway. Why not just replace him now? The point is then, who do you bring in instead? Do you bring in the best possible available driver to score the most points possible? Or do you bring in someone to try and develop for the future? And it actually turns out that it's Franco Colapinto, a name that wasn't really so much on my radar that they're going to bring into the team. I think it's also Zach Sullivan, maybe, who's um, also, I think, a Williams junior driver. But that is also true for Franco Colapinto. Colapinto, Argentinian driver, the first Argentinian he'll be on the grid for a very long time. I think here's the number on that. 23 years it's been since there's been an Argentinian on the grid. And you guys know that any sport that Argentina are involved in, there are some, you know, the fan base goes hard. So, you know, if anyone crashes into Colapinto or Colapinto crashes into anybody, there will be comments in the Twitter replies. I can guarantee you on that. But um, Colapinto and Argentina back on the grid, a driver that wasn't massively on my radar because it's not like he's been killing it in the junior formulas. Definitely a talented driver and also a driver that I believe Fernando Alonso, certainly his entourage, started supporting Colapinto in his future chair about four or five years ago when he was making some noise in some of the junior categories. Now I think he's 21 and um, like he's looking to get into Formula 1 and he's going to do exactly that. So this is an internal replacement and it seems like they've mainly done this because Lawson was just not really feasible because both parties couldn't come to terms. This article is then saying that like well Red Bull didn't want to let him go because they can't make a change if needed and maybe they were willing to let him go but like Vals wasn't willing to agree to those terms. So it's kind of like Vals maybe disagreed with what he wanted to do with bringing Lawson on like full time. Maybe that's what he wanted, but obviously that wasn't what Red Bull were talking about and therefore they couldn't come to terms. So, but apparently Vals wanted Lawson as his number one target. That at least is the rumor, but Red Bull are not yet sure whether their driver lineup is going to be static. What if they do kick out Perez? They need Ricardo for the main team or Sonoda, whatever, and they need Liam Lawson for the second team. They can't then go to Williams and say, hey, you know, you've had five good races with Liam, but we want him back. Like, um, well, maybe they could, but Vals wasn't happy with that and therefore they decided to go down another route and instead they've decided effectively that Colapinto will be their new driver. Now do we agree with this from Vals? He says that Colapinto gives Williams the best chance to compete for points. Now like he's obviously giving his new driver a lot of gas a lot of credit here. Do I expect Colapinto to really do any better with respect to Albon than Sargent did? Not really certainly not initially as Colapinto but any more impressive than Sargent was in the junior formulas you know, there's a debate to be had on that as well. So, you know, if Lawson was coming in, I'd have been really excited. If Mick Schumacher was coming back, I'd have been pretty excited. Colapinto is exciting in the sense that, you know, new blood on the grid, Argentinian talent, and who knows how he's going to do. But to me, this just sounds like Vals is trying to prepare him, obviously have an internal bonus and a cheap option, but also see if Colapinto can become something and actually makes a really impressive jump to Formula 1. I mean, it's been the case before. Drivers that have been good in junior formulas don't deliver. Drivers that haven't been so good really do deliver. So I guess for Williams, this is probably the right call, isn't it? It's like, you've got to make a change. You might as well, because there's nothing really to be gained for keeping Sargent at this point. And at least you give Colapinto the attempt to see whether he's got what it takes over the next nine races. If he does, then he gives himself the opportunity to potentially get a spot on the grid elsewhere. If he doesn't, then, well, he's not going to drive your car anyway, because we've got Sainz coming in next year alongside Albon regardless. So that's why Colapinto's in an interesting spot, that he's maybe the only nine races that he gets to drive. But next season, Vals and Williams have got to lock down anyway. They've got Sainz, they've got, they've got Albon. That's pretty damn good. So no real harm giving another rookie a chance. The only harm is budget, right? Because at the end of the day, Sargent crashed a fair bit. Is Colo Pinto, you know, is Colo Pinto going to crash less? I mean, that'll be what Vals is telling him, but I'm sure Sargent was getting told that. So this is the issue, you bring in a rookie. Sargent wasn't even a rookie this year, but still making a fair few rookie mistakes. Is Colo Pinto going to cause less crash damage than Sargent would? Like, if he's not going to have much pace and Williams aren't going to score any points with him anyway, then does it, you know, what's the trade-off there, right? Because you could have kept Sargent and said, okay, he's probably not going to score many, if any, points. But you know, maybe he's going to be, and maybe he's going to put it in the wall one more time, but that is what it is. If you bring Colop into him, is he going to score any points? I mean, you know, unlikely, given where Albon is struggling to score points, and 
Is he going to put it in the wall? I mean, maybe once, right? Again, so so this is the debate really on whether this is a good idea or not. But I think in general, it's probably the way to go just to give him a try, give him a chance. And um, then it will make things interesting going forward, right? So look, he's won a race before. He's done pretty well in some of the junior formulas. These were his Formula 3 results last season. So, you know, second in Spain, one in Great Britain, one in Italy. And, um, and then in 2024, so this year until, of course, this point, he's raced in, you know, 2024 in the Formula 2 Championship with MP Motorsports and got a couple of podiums and won a sprint race at uh, Imola, I think it was, earlier on the season, right? So he's definitely shown some promise and reasonably consistent results, but, you know, not exactly been an absolute top prospect. But at the end of the day, does this move make sense? I mean, these are the quali and the race head-to-heads for Alwan versus Sargent over the last couple of years. I think maybe there was one sprint quali where Sargent got him. Maybe it was even Austria this year. But in regular qualifying and race sessions, these have been the results. And Albon is a good driver for sure. But in my opinion, he's not exactly like an elite level world championship winning driver in the future. So, um, you know, it doesn't obviously paint a great picture here. So I'm not surprised by the move. I'm kind of surprised by the replacement. But very much interested your thoughts on all this in the comments below. Good luck to, of course, Colapinto to see if he can make this work. He says, this is what dreams are made of. And Val's with some comments for Logan and says, this is undoubtedly incredibly tough on Logan, who has given his all. But, um, you know, I think it was quite clear that Val's lost faith in Logan Sargent a long time ago and that has certainly not changed with what we have seen today. So very much interested to your thoughts and all this stuff in the comments. Hit the like button if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. Take care and I'll see you next time.